Hey everybody. Um, so I, um, something that we've been playing around with a lot, like, uh, oh, I've been playing around with it a lot. Some people in my game group, we think it's really, really cool is, um, these, um, AI generated art things. And you might've heard something about this. You might've heard of something about like, like, uh, Dolly or, or sorry, Dolly 2 or, um, Oh shoot, what's the other one? Uh, there's one that, that a lot of people are using to sort of make like graphic novels and stuff like that, or making comics. Um, it'll come to me. Um, but so one thing with uh, like Dolly 2 or um, what is, oh, actually, I can't remember the other one. They run on a, they run on an engine where, um, you just give them prompts, right? Like you plug in text and then it sort of generates an image based on what you're telling it. Like say that I wanted to do a tiger with purple and green stripes, you know, like I, I could tell the AI that that's what I wanted it to do. And then I could tell it to be really creative and make, you know, some kind of weird tiger or whatever, kind of dial it in a little bit. But that's a lot of what's what's happening like behind the scenes is that the AI is sort of trying to follow your prompts to uh, come up with something that, um, you know, uh, is, a, is an approximation of your of your vision <laughs> or whatever. Right. So you kind of have to go through it and sort of filter out the stuff that you don't like and and or um, stuff that's just weird and doesn't look right or whatever and kind of dial it in, right? So um, one of the things that, uh, that like Diffusion is, is a big one. It's an open source one. And I personally think it's better than Dolly. They're even working on a, um, a music, an AI music generation software called Disco Diffusion, which I, I just think that's really cool. Apparently it uses some kind of like similar algorithm. But anyways, um, none of this stuff up here is mine, um, but uh, I, I have been I have been playing around with it, and um, I uh, I think that this is a, so this is not Dolly, and then this is not um, I just I'm totally drawing a blank on the other one. Um, this is um, Art Breeder. So the thing that I like about this right is that. Um, this does a pretty good job of mushing images together to uh, to come up with new images. Like you can do prompts, right? You can, like, um, let's see, let's let's try to do a new prompt. Um, let's go for. Um, I want to get get rid of all this stuff. Uh, so let's go for a new prompt, and then. We'll say um, like a floating rock in the sky. So that's a pretty easy, you know, that's a, um, an easy kind of prompt, right? It's not too complicated um, to just say, you know, like I, I want a, a boulder, or, you know, or a rock that's like floating around in the sky. So there's not too much to go wrong there. So what we can do is we can um, generate that part first, and then we can start generating other things or using um, like stuff that is already existing, right? Um, so mm, I don't know, that doesn't look, that doesn't look very good to me. Uh, I'm gonna try, let's see, floating boulder in the sky. Try that. And then this, this um, whether I dial it up or dial it down, it's going to make a difference later once I have some actual images to mush together. Um, so one thing that this software is really, really good at is making faces because um, it's just it's just really, really good at, you know, knowing what the, the human face looks like. And, uh, and then when you give it two different faces to mush them together to make like a child, it's 
really, really good at that. And you can do different kinds of styles. Like you could do a photorealistic looking style, or you could do kind of a more cartoony style. Um, so, okay, that's, that's, uh, that's not bad. Um, so I'm just going to save this. And then I'm going to, I'm going to come up with, I'm going to do, let's see, or actually what I could do is I could go and I could look for, um, for other people's, uh, prompts. So I'm going to, um, this is the, this is like the, the classic version up here, right? So basically what this does is it just, you, you tell it that you want to pick one of these, like said that you wanted to make a new anime character or a new furry character, or or just a, you know, like a, a whole kind of concept art thing. Um, so what I can do is I can uh, go up here and then uh, grab a parent image. Um, and let's see, so created in light. Um, well, I can search for, um, uh, I can search for like a, uh, I don't know, ast asteroid, asteroid, not asteroid. Let's see, boulder, uh, cause basically I just, I, I want to get like a big rock or something like that. Um, and then I want to say that I wanted to find, uh, or let's see, I'm going to try and find like a crystal, something that looks cool, some kind of a, a crystal image. Uh, there's a lot of these. Oh, well, I kind of like that one. So I can start kind of mushing these together and then, um, you know, I can, I can filter through them. Right. So I can say, okay, I like this one. This one's cool over here. You know, it's that kind of has like the shape that I'm going for. Um, and then I can go into, and then, you know, like some of these might be like really, really weird and not at all what I'm looking for, but I can go into stuff that, uh, that I've saved. Just scroll down. Um, and uh, this is still in beta. Um, it does it does kind of crash a little bit sometimes. Um, let's see. I'll just, just reload this. Okay. So if I put uh, if I put some tags on here, um, like. Uh, it looks like a spire, a uh, rock. I'm just putting these on here for other people, um, just in case they want to use my images to generate something. Um, so then I can go down here and I can say remix this, right? And I have this as my parent now. And then um, I can add something to it, like say, Ooh, I don't know. I think I want a, a castle. Um, that's kind of cool, <laughs> like a floating a floating castle in the ocean. Um, and then I can tell you know I can go down here and say spawn multiple images. And uh, okay, none of these look very good. But you know sometimes you just hit gold. Uh, you just come up with uh, something that looks really, really cool. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to save that one. I like that one. And call this a crystal too. That'd be cool to get like a floating crystal, like on a, or a floating castle on a, on a rock made of like crystal or something like that, like that, right? So I could say, 
you know, I could say something like that. Um, but the, the chances of the AI coming up with something good is, uh, I don't know. But like, here's, here's, a, here's some stuff that I, that I made earlier. Like, uh, I, I did this one. To me, this looks like a finished piece of art. You know, like this is, this is plenty good enough to go into a, uh, that's like a finished illustration. And then if you do have some digital art skills, then you can go in and you can, you know, create something like this and then just use like Photoshop or whatever and come up with a really, really good uh, finished illustration. But I like how also, you know, up here we have all this stuff that's kind of like the DNA, you know, of the image. Um, like, let's see, that's, that's kind of what I was going for, actually. So I'm going to remix this one. And go ahead and add, uh, add that other one that I liked. Let's see if I can get a crystal castle in the sky. Hmm. That's pretty good. Actually, all of these look pretty good. So I can just save all those. And then, you know, like if I, if I want to put some effort into it, then I can get a, a really, really good uh, finished image. But, um, so the, the thing that it's, that's pretty amazing, like that this just really, really excels at though, is taking, um, like, uh, faces and just mushing them together to get something new. So say that I, say that I, I have this face right here, and then you can see how I've taken DNA of all these different faces and kind of mushed them together to get something new. Uh, so I can make this, you know, beautiful young woman, the, uh, the parent, and then I can add another parent. And, um, it doesn't matter if they're both female, that's fine. <laughs> uh, could make, put a guy in there. So, you know, it automatically, um, just kind of comes up with something that looks like it could be their child. You know, so we've got, we, um, I think part of what it does is it does try to make one side a little bit more masculine and one side a little bit more feminine looking, and then maybe something that's just in between that you can play with. Um, but we can go in here and we can change the hair color. We can, uh, dial up the, the brown, um, and, um, if you, if you go overboard, right, the AI just doesn't know what to do, you know? It's like, okay, let's see if we turn it up to 90, right? It's gonna make everything brown, basically. It's just, it's not gonna really know what to do when you tell it to go up super, super high. Um, so you kind of have to like play around with the sliders and, um, uh, but I can also, you know, I can uh, open, open the mouth. Uh, like if I don't like this this pose, I can open this character's mouth more. I can make them angrier or happier, you know, changing their expression. Um, I can make them more male or more female. Um, and, you know, this isn't really different from what other AI image generators do, but um, what it, what it, you know, like these sliders are not uncommon to see. Um, but what the, what I think that this specific program does really, really well is if you're a visual person, right? And then you, you have one image that you really like and then you have another image that you really like is uh, mushing them together. That's where it kind of excels at instead of putting in text prompts. Let's say that I want to make this person just a little bit older. Um, you know, I can do that. Um, and then, oh, that was gender. <laughs> I made it more male. So I'm going to keep this guy like this guy. I could give him more facial hair. Um, 
Let's see, I could put a, let's see, if I put a hat on him, what does it do? No, I don't like that. Uh, this one looks good, though. I'm going to keep this one, right? So then um, I want to I wanna make a female, though. So I'm going to push it more towards female. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of amazing to me. Like, uh, I like the art style and everything. It's not completely photorealistic, not completely cartoony. Like, this is, you know, I think this is plenty good enough to be, you know, in like a book or whatever, some kind of a finished illustration. Or, you know, say that you are like one of those CG artists or even like just a, a traditional artist, and then you want to just create some character that has a certain look to them. Like, I can go in and I can change their uh, ethnicity. Like, I could make this person look more Middle Eastern. And, uh, and I have not seen this as much on other um, AI sites or um, other AI software. Like, where you can actually change the race of the person. Um, but some things, um, like, I can go in and... Like, makeup seems to just sort of soften or harden their features. Um, like, you know, women tend to have the softer features than men do. Men have, like, sharper uh, lines in their face. Um, so it can, you know, it can make, make your image look a little more feminine if it's a little bit smoother. Uh, and I like this one, so I'm going to keep this one. So, um, when I was in, uh, art school, I like that one too, I'm going to keep that one. Uh, when I was in art school, I did take a, um, uh, a, a concept art class. And I've never really done concept art, not as a commercial artist, at least. Um, it's a very, very cutthroat business. And uh, it's actually easier to bust into it if you do like landscapes and environments and things like that than it is to do character art uh, because there's like so many super talented people out there that are doing character design. And um, it's just, it's a very, very cutthroat business, right? Um, but say that, um, say that uh, I, I, I just want to do some kind of a sketch, you know? Uh, I, I want to create a character, like I just created a few faces, right, that look really good. So if I have this full body character, um, I can come up with some kind of design for the body, what the costume would kind of look like, and then you have your sharp, you know, focus of the, uh, the face. So that's like what, that's what, a big chunk of doing characters design actually is, is just doing like sketchy kind of stuff for a face or, you know, like you could hand in something to your art director and be like, Hey, what do you think of this? You know, what do you, what do you think of this? Like, um, and, and they could hand it back to you and say, Oh, she looks too matronly. You know, she looks too old. Like she needs to be a, um, she needs to be younger, skinnier, you know, more sexier or whatever, you know. Um, or they could be the other way around, you know, they should be like, oh, she like, you made her look really sexy, she needs to look more like a mom. Uh, so, like, I can come in here, you know, and like, I, uh, I've i messed around with it a little bit. These are some of the, um, like, the popular ones that people have made. Kind of like, uh, I mean, you know, like, I like some of my own, but but it's like, uh, why not, you know, use other people's stuff to, like, uh, yeah, like that one. Give her, like, a Samus, you know, kind of, like, a skin suit, whatever, some kind of a sci-fi thing. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, this is a lot of what concept art is. It's just kind of, like, coming up with ideas and, you know, mushing them together and then showing them to your art director. And then, like, uh, one of the hard things about um, doing character design, or this is one thing that I've heard people who do, who I know who do character design, complain about, 
is that um, the when you design a costume, right, you have to be able to visualize what that costume is going to look like wrapped all the way around the character. If you hand over a, a sketch like this to a costume designer or a um, you know a somebody who does like three D. Uh, you know, 3D design in the computer for like a game or something like that, they're not going to be happy with you because they need to know what the costume looks like from all angles. So check this out. We can, we can, uh, we can rotate them. Somebody's like doing construction outside. I'm waiting for my dog to freak out and start barking. Um, so, um, you know, with this, it's like, maybe it's not quite so difficult, but, um, I do, I like this one in the middle, right? So I'm going to keep this one. Um, but you know, I can change the color, like say that I want to make her look a little more red. Uh, I can take some of that blue out of there and then just make her, you know, look a little more red. Maybe even a little more. Kind of focused on this one, but this one's starting to look pretty good too. Uh, I like this design that she, it almost looks like she could have like tattoos, you know, which could be like snakes or something that kind of wrap around her sort of has one of those like space opera, like sorceress kind of looks to her or a, I don't know, some kind of a fantasy race. Um, but uh, yeah, I like this one. I'm gonna keep this one. And I'm gonna keep this one too. But, uh, but you know, it just, it just adds that like randomized element um, like if this one has more of a skin suit, you know, like a cat suit, uh, we could um, we can go in and like there's there's like things that you can do in here too. Like say that I want to give her more ninja, I can dial up the ninja, um, or uh, I can dial up the armor. You know, to like some of these look more. I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of like maybe generic uh, kind of like fantasy sci-fi armor, space opera armor. Um, but it just it just makes your job really, really easy as a a concept designer, you know, character artist of um, just like I could hand off 50 of these, you know, I could do like um, 50 uh, thumbnails, 50 images uh, that sort of somehow like follow what my um, what my art director wanted, you know, and then he could just he could just go in and say, like, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one. And then I could take those th three, you know, and kind of like dial it in, just save those three and then put those in and 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 get them closer together and then go on and do a finished illustration. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, that's a lot of what being a concept artist, uh, character artist, you know, for um, a lot of things. I mean, like, you know, it could be, it could be a movie, like you could be doing storyboards for a movie, or you could be doing, um, you know, you could be doing like, uh, a costume design and things like that, or, or you could be, um, creating your own characters for like a, a graphic novel or something like that. Um, but, uh, this one, you know, like this one, I don't know, something about this, about Art Breeder, it just, um, it somehow it jives more with my brain, how my brain works. And I have a very, you know, I'm much more on the like artistic end of the spectrum and instead of like, you know, math. And uh, it's just, it's this, this, my brain works more like this 
when I'm when I'm thinking art. So, but uh, like I'll show you maybe something that I would hand off to uh, to an art director. Okay, what I did was just uh, put up, uh, you know, put together, throw something together really quick. Um, of some, this is similar or, you know, maybe like one of the steps towards something that I would hand off to an art director, right? So let's say that I have this, uh, this character, um, maybe it's from a script, maybe it's from a book or, you know, from, uh, it could be from a video game or this could be like storyboards. Um, and then I need to hand this off to my art director. So they're going to kind of know what they're going to want to know, like what her costume kind of looks like. And then they're going to they're going to want to know what her face looks like. And then maybe, you know, there could be something else in here. Like I did I did this this version where she's a little more, you know, pissed off, uh, maybe a little bit more athletic, fiery uh, red, you know. Um, and then this one where she's a little more purple and gray little more friendly and approachable looking. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, like this one, she could be, I don't know, a medic or something like that. Maybe like a combat medic or something. And then this one, um, I'm kind of picturing like somebody who uses like biotics, like, uh, Jack in uh, Mass Effect or something like that, or like a fire, you know, fiery sorceress, something like that. So, you know, like the, but the, this is, this is what you would give to your, to your, um, your art director. And then they could say, oh, she looks too young or she looks too, you know, she, she's, uh, make her a little bit more athletic or, um, make her look, uh, you know, angrier and like more like sundere or whatever, you know, and then you would go back and you would kind of dial that in. But, you know, like I have her face. And then I could even say, you know, like if my art director said, oh, you know, I want her to look a little bit more angry, I can just dial up the angry, you know, or like um, if uh, if they said, oh, well, she needs to have like a scar, you know, here or something like that, you yeah. know, you can just plug all that stuff in and then you can go in and do your finished illustration after you get the A-OK -okay from your art director and that will save you just tons and tons and tons of work. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I thought that you guys, you know, you might think that this was interesting or, um, seeing like some of what goes into being a, uh, a character designer. If it's something that you're interested in, this can definitely make your job just like a million times easier. Uh, it's crazy, but, um, like I really wish I had access to tools like this when, when I was in uh, art school, <laughs> would have saved me so much time. But uh, but anyways, yeah, I think that's gonna be it, you guys, and I uh, uh, hope you got something out of it. Um, I uh, I know I haven't done any painting videos in a while or anything like that. I, I had to take a little break, dealing with burnout and just uh, had a summer vacation, and stuff like that. But I'm back. So, uh, so anyways, uh, more painting videos and stuff like that to come. And, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. All right. So.